Hey everyone, I'm Luke and welcome to my channel Laden Space Directive. In this video I'm going to cover the installation and running of Texturizer, an AI image generation plugin for Blender that runs locally using Comfy UI. Comfy is a very powerful customizable generative AI platform and Texturizer takes full advantage of what both Blender and Comfy have to offer while maintaining an easy to use interface. Texturizer comes with a lot of great built-in features, including segment prompts, which lets you add prompts to individual objects or materials in your scene, as well as multi-pass background rendering that utilizes a ton of useful 3D data without freezing your interface. The setup process is very straightforward, and I'll walk you through here the entire installation, including installing Blender and Comfy UI. If you already have those installed, and make sure you have both Blender 4.2 and the latest version of Comfy, go ahead and use the timestamps in the video to skip to the texturizer installation. The links to the plugin and other software can be found in the video description. Let's get into it. All right, so here I am in the browser and I'm gonna start by downloading Blender. So I'm on blender.org and I'm gonna just go to download and download Blender 4.23. Um, you're gonna want at least uh, Blender 4.2 for texturizer. All right, so it's downloaded. I'm gonna open it up. While this installs, I'm gonna go ahead and download Comfy UI as well. So here I'm on comfy.org. I'm just gonna go to docs and then installation. And here on Windows, I can just press download for Windows. Uh, you'll see it says that I'll also need 7-zip. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to that link and download that for Windows as well. I think Blender finished, so let's go to, we got that there, and let's make sure it opens up. All right, I'm inside Blender, so let's go back to our downloads and see how Comfy is doing. Comfy is finishing up, but I will open up 7-zip and get that installed. So once Comfy has downloaded, I want to extract it with 7-Zip. And I'm going to specify the location for the install. This can be wherever you want on your computer. And let's let that complete. All right, so now Comfy UI has finished downloading and I can see it in the folder that I specified and I'm gonna click through and I want to keep note of this file path here and we'll be using that in a little bit. All right, so now that everything is installed, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Blender and I'm gonna go to Edit, Preferences and I'm gonna hit install from disk. And now I'm gonna to navigate to my downloads where I have my copy of Texturizer that I've downloaded. It should be a zip file. And I'll click install from disk. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna search for Texturizer and I can see it here, Texturizer version zero. And you'll notice that it says install missing dependencies. And if it says that, that's because there's Python packages that need to be installed in order to let Texturizer run properly inside Blender. So before I click this, I'm gonna to go to Window, Toggle System Console, and doing this is gonna let me see the progress of this installation as it's happening. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a black box. So I'll go ahead and click Install Missing Dependencies. Great. And just like that, once that button disappears and these other settings pop up, that means we have successfully installed the dependencies and everything is ready to go. So I'm gonna to navigate to the place where Comfy UI was installed, go through these folders until I reach uh, one that's just called Comfy UI. And I'll know it's the right one that if I click on it, inside of there, I should see a main.py file. This is what allows us to run and start Comfy UI from within Blender. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't want the main file, I just want this folder. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna copy this directory and paste it into here. Just so you can see, if I didn't get the right directory, let's say I got the one, the parent directory, it's gonna let me know that it was not able to locate 
the CompUI path correctly, and that's because it's not the directory including the main.py file. There's this red button, add nodes. So this is gonna be what allows Texturizer to interface with CompUI. So all I have to do is click this and it's already ported them from the Blender installation to your CompUI installation. This is a fresh installation of CompUI that I have. And so if I click on recommended starter models, I don't have any models installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and download these. And this will download these models to the corresponding, correct corresponding folders uh, within CompUI. Uh, this is a lightweight one. It's just a Laura, which is a style model. So that one went quick. Uh, these other two are gonna be larger. So I'm gonna click download and then I'll be back when they complete. Okay, so now that our recommended models have finished downloading, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and let's take a look at a couple settings inside of our preferences here before moving on to generating an image. Uh, so here we have our server URL. This is gonna be the local or remote server that ComfyUI is running on. And below that we have our data preferences. So Texturizer, in order to interface with ComfyUI and send uh, all of your Blender data over or back and forth, needs to save that data locally on your machine. And so this is gonna be the folder path structure in which it does so. By default, it's gonna to save to this default directory under a subdirectory of the Blender file name you're working in. But you can change this to what you want, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And now before I close my preferences, let's just go and hit save preferences because uh, sometimes the auto save doesn't work. Okay, we're gonna to wanna to be in our 3D view here. And if I press N on my keyboard, it'll open up this side panel and I can navigate to texturizer. This is our main texturizer panel and it's where we can kind of control all the settings for our image generation. So you'll see here it says start ComfyUI. So before we do anything, we're gonna to need to either start or connect to our already running ComfyUI server. So I click on that, it's gonna open up a terminal. And if we just give it a sec, now I have ComfyUI running and you'll see this has changed to texturize. That means we're connected to the server, but we want to click on this and so it says texturizing and that means that we're ready to generate images. Uh, before we generate anything, I'm going to want to select a model here. So here is uh, one of the three models that we just downloaded. And now I'm going to want to prompt and we actually have this nice feature built in because Blender starts with this default cube. If I click on this cube, it's going to give me a, a nice little, a nice little prompt here and I can keep pressing it, it'll give me a random prompt every time. So a cube of molten lava with crusted edges. I like that. So if I hit create now, oh, please run setup file for AI. That's right. So before we run texturizer, you're going to need to click that. And that's going to create a couple workspaces here that the plugins using in order to collect data that's used in ComfyUI. And so if I open up my panel again, and now I hit create, we can see our images start to generate. And as we wait for this progress to complete, uh, we can also go to our ComfyUI server and see that as well. But here in Blender, we have that running and it's finished. And so to, in order to see our outputs, we'll go to our image viewer panel here, any image viewer panel. And there will also be a texturizer panel within that. So if I click that and I click on our output image here, and there we go. There's our lava cube with uh, crusted edges. And uh, just like that, you can generate an image with texturizer. One thing to keep in mind is if you see this icon, it's just because Blender has issues with loading image previews. So there's a couple ways that we can get that to load. But if I click on this little icon up here, uh, that will refresh any of our unloaded previews. You'll notice within this image viewer panel, we have a couple options, a couple, couple categories. Our left one here is gonna be our input passes. So these are the render passes that are collected within Texturizer and that we can use, sorry about that, that we can use to guide our generation. So these are all kind of grayed out except for base. The reason for that is because that's currently the only pass that we're using. Texturizer will kind of figure out what passes we need 
and then when you hit create, it's gonna update those passes. So for instance, if I make this queue bigger and hit create, uh, we have our updated layer pass here and we've also got our new image. So if I go to my output images, we'll see that here. We've got our new output. Now you notice if we go to the panel here, I have some more settings I can change. So if I change the seed value here, that's gonna give us a different variation of our prompt. Um, so everything else is the same, but it's just a different variation and we'll get a, or a slightly different image. Great. And below that we have our denoise value. So this is gonna determine how close or far we stray from our sort of base render here. If it has a very low denoise, uh, you'll notice basically we don't get any change and you'll see here we just have our essentially our starting image um, we're going to probably want to be above 0.5 in most cases and i'm going to leave it at 0.8 and that means i'm sort of just using a little bit of the information here to transfer this image into our output image that we should see pop up in a sec there we go now if i want to completely ignore the use of this base image putting it to one won't quite do that. Uh, this is uh, something to do with Comfy UI, but we're going to want to click ignore base image. And that's now going to not use any information from this image at all. And you'll see with our render passes, let me hit create, but we'll see with our layer passes that they're all deactivated. And what this means is that essentially Comfy UI is only relying on this text prompt now. Um, and so the fact that our cube is there, you'll see like when I change my scene, Actually, it won't even let me create again because it's saying, hey, there's no new information. But if I change my seed, for instance, here, you'll see it's not going to be using any of the information from my scene right now. So what if we want to not use this sort of base render, which will give it freedom over the sort of textures and colors in our final image, but we still want to follow the objects in our scene. So below there, we've got this control net panel. So if I enable that and hit add control net, I'm gonna select depth for now. And you'll see if I go to my layers, oh, this was uh, from an old thing. Let me just hit create real quick. So that's gonna update my layers passes here. So this is calculating the, the depth of the objects in our scene. And now when I go to my output and I get my new image, now we're following our image really nicely. When I make big changes to the scene, I'm gonna to wanna to recalculate the depth here. And let's hit create again. Uh, keep in mind that if this control net model is red, that you're gonna to have to select a control net appropriate to the uh, main model type that you're using here. If you downloaded the recommended models, the control net is gonna be compatible with the recommended main model as well. Awesome, so we're getting a really great image here and you'll see that this strength is gonna affect how much basically control that the depth channel has on our final image. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a, another scene and show you some more settings that we can mess around with here. All right, so here I've got a scene open and you'll see I've got a table here and a bowl with some uh, spheres in it. And this is just a Pretty simple scene here. And now I've given it a prompt, a rustic wooden table with a bowl of apples, and we're getting a really nice result. Here, let's take a look at a really neat feature of Texturizer, and that is segment prompts. So if I click on segment prompts here, and I'm gonna hit use segment data, and this is gonna allow us to assign a specific prompt to any object or if I click on this, I can do collections or families, which are parented structures or materials in our scene. So I'm gonna leave it on objects. Let's select this object here and I'm gonna say orange. So now if I hit create, we're gonna get a image that is virtually the same, except that this object here is now an orange. And there we go. So here, if I go to my output images, I can go to this history tab. I can switch back and forth between these two images and very little in the image has changed, except for the fact that this is now an orange. 
and this can be really helpful for defining specific areas of your scene, especially when your prompts get more complex. So now let's say that we want to make this a metal bowl. Uh, all I have to do is go here and say metal bowl. And I hit create now, I'll give it a second. As that's generating, I'm gonna show a nice additional feature, which is this auto queue. So if I turn on auto queue here, um, I'm gonna turn off segment prompts for a second here as well. But look at that, great, that's fantastic. So um, I turned off segment prompts, but that's just because it takes a little longer to generate every time you add another segment. And so here we're back to our base image without the segments. So this auto queue feature is gonna allow me to make changes to my scene and texturizer is gonna recognize those changes and automatically update. So um, let's say I want this apple to be extremely large. And this is our previous generation. So if I, let's say I make a change and I don't wanna wait for it to finish, I can just hit cancel current and that's going to uh, move on to the next queue generation. And I'll cancel again because uh, I wanna see this image here. So let's let that complete. Um, and you also notice that I don't need to be looking through the camera as I generate. So and there we got a really big apple. Um, but I can, I can move around my scene naturally and work um, as, if the, as if texturizer isn't running. This auto queue will also queue any changes to my panel here. So let's say I change my seed or I can give it a random seed and those will be queued. If I make additional changes while there's already something in the queue, it'll replace that. So you'll always only have one prompt in your queue. I'm gonna turn on segment data again. All right, so we've gotten an image here and I like everything about it, although I don't want this sort of ornate pattern on the bowl. So I'm just gonna go ahead. There's a couple options. Uh, one thing I could do is say, for instance, a smooth metal bowl, but let's try this instead. If we go to our prompt, you'll see there's this negative prompt and I could try putting something like ornate and that's gonna remove those concepts that are in this field here from our image. So now we've got our updated image and our bowl no longer has that ornate patterning, uh, but I do notice we've got our orange slice in half. So I'm also just gonna put sliced here so that any images I make in the future, hopefully the fruit is not cut. All right, so now we've got our orange and our two apples, our nice smooth bowl, but let's say that I don't want this to be a realistic image. So I'm gonna go over to style here. And if I go ahead and from base, I'm gonna, maybe I want this to be a painting. So let's go to watercolor, art style watercolor. And let's see what that does. Okay. Awesome, so we've got our watercolor painting here. I think that covers everything that we need in order to get started with texturizer and keep an eye out for an upcoming video where I'll go in depth into every single feature that we have here. You notice we have this uh, advanced UI option that I didn't get into and there's a lot of stuff here. And I'll also show you how to not only use texturizer from within Blender, but use that data inside of Comfy UI as well. So we can use it within the node interface. So I'll cover that in an upcoming video as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.